Louisiana Legends is made possible by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana. This important program series enables us to discover, through the accomplishments of our fellow Louisianians, the unique character of a state so proudly served by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana for 60 years. Hello, friends of Louisiana legends. I'm on gorgeous Lake Bistineau, about 20 miles out from Bossier City, way up in North Louisiana. And I'm here interviewing or talking with a great American artist. Her name is Clyde Connell, and Clyde Connell was born at the turn of the century in 1901. And Clyde, it's just an honor and a pleasure to oh, be with you. Thank you. The first thing I ask is, where did a young lady get the name Clyde? Uh, we don't know. You do not know? Oh, uh, I tell you, my father had two special friends, and each one of them named their, their son or daughter Clyde. And they, they would laugh when somebody would say, it must have been a woman. <laughs> and uh, they didn't, uh, they knew it had some. They never told the secret. Never though. told the secret, so I don't know why. Yes, ma'am. Clyde, uh, when you were very young, there were many survivors of the Civil War. Yeah. And they talked about their experience, did That's they not? Right. So. This was right, almost right after the Civil War. How did they feel? What did they, how did the Southerners in this part of the world feel? They, they resented things very much. They thought they had been mistreated and didn't get that due and all that kind of thing. Uh, what did they think of Abraham Lincoln, who after all had uh, 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 shall we say, interrupted their economy and... and yeah. And what, how did they feel about Lincoln? They didn't care too much for Abraham They didn't? Lincoln. No. Now, you were born on a plantation, were you not? Yes. And by all rights, you were a young Southern lady. Yeah. You should have either been a teacher or a nurse, a housewife. There were not many opportunities for ladies, were there? No. How in, how did you go into art? Of all things, how did you become this? Because I love to paint and draw, and I could get supplies. Not, not very good supplies, but I could get supplies. And that's how it started. Did you start as a very young lady painting? Yes. You were? Uh -huh. And you immediately took to it? Yes. Now, when did you say to yourself, I am an artist? Uh, I would say when I was well established as an artist. As an artist. I didn't feel that until I really became established and could think. But it must have been very tough in those days for a Southern, particularly a Southern lady, yeah. to be an artist. It was. Yeah. It wasn't like there were a lot of y'all, huh? Uh-uh. No. No. And you worked in oils and acrylics, huh? Yes. That's how you started. Yes. Clyde, uh, when did you take your first trip to New York? Who? You, were you a very young girl or, or, or a young woman? A young woman. You were a young woman? Yes. And did you fall in love with it? Oh, I fell in love with New York. And you go every year? I go every year. And, and, and you want to see what other artists are mm -hmm. doing, don't you? I go to the galleries. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And uh, to give you an idea that we're not talking about a hobby of painting, uh, Clyde's works hang in most of the major museums in the world. For example, the Metropolitan Museum in New York. And friends, they don't hang things uh, 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 because they took a liking to somebody. 
In other words, uh, this lady is the real thing. <laughs> you had another passionate burning, equal to your love of your art, and this is a shocker. This lady was a civil rights activist. That's right. To that the guy, point of danger. Yes. I've been threatened many times. What they want you to do? Be quiet? Be quiet. Just shut up. Just shut up? Yeah. And how did you handle that? I just went on doing what I thought was right and saying what I thought was right. That's quite inspiring, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of the younger people have no concept of this, but for a Southerner mm -hmm. to speak out for civil rights, but a Southern lady to speak out for civil rights was very, very unique. Yeah. And dangerous. And dangerous. Because they were threatened, but somehow I think they were afraid to do too much. They were going to burn a cross on your lawn. Oh, huh? yeah. You weren't afraid, Clyde? Mm -mm. No? No. Where did your courage come from? I don't know. I believed in uh, what I thought was right, and I thought that I should stick by it. Now, Clyde, you have been a very independent lady. And by that, friends, I get the impression that this distinguished artist has pretty much lived her life exactly as she pleased. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, you're right. I, I had to. People were so very uh, strict. And uh, I never would have gotten to New York if I hadn't done that. Did it distress your parents, this independence that you no, showed? No, they didn't. They knew they felt I could handle it. A and you told me that your late husband was relieved when you would go on a trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right. But I see your son as we do this interview <laughs> laughing when I say that. Yeah. Uh, Clyde, what, the, uh, you're, as we do this interview, you're uh, 97. Yeah. Do you ever get out? Do you do you do any relaxing? Yeah. Where do you go? Harris. The casino? Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> and may I ask what you do there? <laughs> I gamble on the slots. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> They're here again, somebody doing what they please, <laughs> which is a part of, of being an, an artist. Yeah. An artist doesn't follow orders very well, does he or she? No. Mm -mm. You march to your own drummer. That's right. Now, you know, I want to tell you, as I look out on this gorgeous property surrounding your home where you live with your son and his wife, and this magnificent lake to the rear with more moss than I've ever seen. We don't have this kind of moss anymore in, in South Louisiana. Uh, <clears throat> yet, you don't paint scenery no. at all. Never have you. Never wanted to paint birds, flowers. No. Your painting and your sculpture are highly political, aren't they? Yeah. How did that start? Well, because I had belief in civil rights. Yes. And that kind of thing. And I wanted to have it to be a part of my life. My goodness. You, you went to Dallas to hear Martin Luther King, didn't you? Yeah. And you said that was a dangerous thing at that yeah. time. You expected trouble? Yeah. And you heard him speak? Yeah. And what kind of impression did Dr. King make on you? Oh, that was what, not a good impression, yeah. very good. Was he in person a great speaker like we see on television? Uh, I wouldn't call him a great speaker, but he was a person saying what he really thought. And uh, commun tried to communicate with us. And I was so pleased to be able to hear. How many white women were there in the crowd? Not many. Not too many. Mm -hmm. But that didn't bother you either? No. Did you have to go a lot of places by yourself because of your beliefs and your independence? Yes. As my son. I've been lots of places. By yourself? By myself. You went to New York by yourself for years, mm -hmm. huh? Every year I went to New York. And you're still going? Yeah. 
and you still enjoy it. Oh, I love it. Now, you, you, you've worked in sculpture, you've worked with oils, you've worked with acrylics, and I mentioned that scenery plays no part in your work. Your inspiration came from within, didn't it? Yes. What you saw in your head. Yes. And how I felt about what was going on. Yes. Things were so, um, well, dangerous at times. You, you obviously feel terrible about some of the tragedies yeah. that man has put himself into. That's right. Yeah. How about the Depression, Clyde? Oh, it was bad. You were a young woman in her mm -hmm. 30s in the Depression. Uh, uh, there was a young lady that worked to go out and see about people and find out what they needed and if they needed anything. And she would come by and pick me up just to have somebody with her. Yes. And we would go and examine the place and recommend that they be taken or not taken. And it was rough. People didn't have enough to eat in lots of cases. It must have been very sad and depressing. It was very sad. Did you paint any of those people? Mm -mm. You did not? No. What, what drove you? What, what sights impressed your heart and your soul so much that you had to commit them to? To, to sculpture or to, or to the canvas. Uh, for example, those, those groups you have of bound people. Yeah. What, what does that say to you? Uh, it said to me, uh, I would go to New York and see mothers just following their daughters around without any thought of themselves doing what their daughters told them to do. And I called them bound people because they didn't have a life of their own. I was quite concerned that the women of my age uh, didn't, didn't Did express not have life. themselves. Women were very suppressed, were they not? Yeah. Very suppressed. There was yeah. so little you could do, huh? That's right. Yeah. My goodness. And I didn't, I didn't. I think that was the way to live. And I didn't? Thought, no, it didn't. How did your husband, who must have been a saint, <laughs> how did he handle that ferocious independence? Because he just, after all, he was a, a white southern male. They yeah, were the dominant creatures. He didn't seem to care what I did. He didn't? He let you run as yeah, you had he to? He didn't bother. I guess he knew that was the only way that yeah, it could work, that's huh? Right. And you all had three children, yeah. two of them who are still living. Yes. Your son and his wife live here with you. Yeah. Have you lived for periods alone? Yes. You have? Uh-huh. Did, did you feel secure out here on this lake? Yes, I do. And you've got that dog who protects you pretty yeah. good, huh? Jake's good. What's the dog's name? Jake. Jake, mm -hmm. and Jake is a golden cocker spaniel. Yeah. But you tell me quite up in years. Yes. You love her? Oh, yeah. She spends a lot of time with you? Oh, uh, she spends a lot of time in the house, especially in the cold weather. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Do you still paint or, or, or sculpt now? Even now, do you still do art? Yes. You still do it? I do. And does it give you pleasure still? Yeah. I feel the need every once in a while to record something or to uh, leave, a, leave some memory of it. Uh, unlike people like uh, Grandma Moses yeah. and uh, Clementine Hunter, you, you never tried to recapture uh, church meetings and and, and picnics and the campground and that kind of thing. That subject matter, you were interested in the more broad, uh, uh, yeah. I would say political subjects, were you not? That's right. I always was one that took into account the tone and pattern of the time you were living in. How did war, you, you went through World War I, World War II, Korea, 
uh, Vietnam. How did war affect your painting? Very much. Very much. Very much. And you read a lot, didn't you? Yeah. And did you care for music? Yes. You did? Oh, yes, I did. I wonder what kind. Do you, uh, well... Was it symphony or, 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 or opera or popular music of the day? It wasn't that. It was kind of a cross in between. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you, you were in love with loveliness, yes. as an artist must yes, be. Sir. It didn't matter, did it? No. Now, your mother lived how long? To be a hundred. A hundred years old. Mm -hmm. So you're still very young. Yeah. Yeah, you're a youngster. <laughs> I'm a youngster, that's right. You're a heck of a woman, I'll tell you <laughs> that. I've never met anybody like this lady, friends. She, uh, 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 she's so much brighter and more alert than me. Uh, uh, oh, it, it's no. embarrassing. Oh, yeah. We had a fabulous talk inside, and uh, I just can't get over you. I'm a little worried about your gambling. <laughs> don't, don't, I'm not going to stop gambling. Do you ever win? Oh, yeah, once in a while. Yeah, that's a good feeling. <laughs> I don't, I'm not very lucky, though. I don't win too much. And I've never won in my life, so you <laughs> have me there, you see. <laughs> well, you know, my maid won 600 the other week. Oh, my goodness. A week or two ago. She was the happiest woman. Oh, I can imagine. Yes. Is there anything, any subject that you would like to paint in the years remaining to you or sculpt? In, in other words, do you have regrets about not covering something that's always been in you? Not, not. No. You, 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 you've pretty much done the things that moved you. That's right. Do you watch a lot of the television news? Uh, news. News, yes. yes, but not much television. No. Are you going to watch this program? Yes, I'll watch it. I'm um, going to call and check on you to okay, make sure you're I'm doing it, you when know? When will it be out? Oh, in a few months, maybe uh, sometimes in March or April. Okay, not very far I'll away. watch for it. I certainly want to what see What is it. your advice to young artists, Clyde, young people trying to start in this business? to always listen to what interests and takes their attention. Be, be individual. You almost have to be. Well, you're not an artist. That's right. You're a tracer, yeah. a copy machine. Yeah. And we've got those. Yeah. We don't need any more. We sure don't. How did it feel? And do you remember when you sold your first work of art? Oh, I think it was great. I've forgotten what I sold it for, but it wasn't very much. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I was so pleased that anybody would want to buy. That must be the moment when a person yeah. knows they're an artist. Yeah. When someone else wants what comes yeah, out of that's them. That's right. Art is so personal, isn't it? Oh, yes. Very personal. I've always looked at it like giving birth to a child, you know? Yeah. Because you carry it around. Uh-huh. And finally, it, there is that time when it must emerge. That's right. Like a child. Uh-huh. Uh, how did you feel when the Metropolitan Museum showed your work? Oh, What kind of wonderful. a feeling was that? Oh, uh, it was that that really was a great time when the museums began to show my work. Because I, I hadn't really thought about that. Uh, but did, did you work through an agent? Huh? Did you have an agent? No. You did not? No. So how did the world become aware of your art out here on Lake Bistano, which we had trouble finding today? <laughs> well, uh, it was through showing in the museum. I want to tell our friends, one of uh, Clyde's closest friends is the actress comedian Lily Tomlin, Tomlin, who's bought some of her works. Now, how did you meet Lily Tomlin? I met, she came one night, um, or I came one night to one of her shows. Yes. And uh, met her, and she got, she, asked me lots of questions, and I invited her out. And she began to come here. She came often. 
What kind of person is she, Clyde? Oh, great. Is yes. she as much fun as she is on the stage? Yes. She is? Yes. And you were saying today to your son that you, 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 you think you'll give her a call. Yes. You call her from I time to time? I call her quite often. And is she always kind and lovely? Uh, oh, yes. She's a great person. You think she'll come again? Mm-hmm. She will come she's back. she's able. Yes. She, I don't think she, I, she must be very strong from the way she talks and her. She's very busy, too. Yes. She's a very successful mm -hmm. uh, actress and, and, yes. and comedian. She's kind of transcended the genre, and she's very big. Yes. She has a cult, a following. That's right. What are you going to do next? What, do you have some work that you want to work on? Do you have some unfinished painting? or? I don't have anything unfinished. I would love very much to start a new series. You would? Yeah. Do you have anything inside of you in mind? No. Does it, are, will you wait for it? No, it'll come. It will? Yeah. But those things don't come very often, do they? Uh, not unless you're in my position where I haven't really done anything in new yes. in a long time. Yes. It comes easier. Do you have any regrets about life? Do you have anything you'd have done differently that you should have done differently? Do you? Oh, I'm sure I should have done lots of things differently. But um, I was thinking about civil rights. I've worked hard on civil rights and have been threatened with everything. Yes, ma'am. But. Um, Nobody ever really. I think because I was a woman. Otherwise, a man they would have done something about it. Yes, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. uh, what artists have inspired you over the years? What 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 artist uh, uh, did you have as a role model? Did you, or were there any? I'm trying to. How think. about, uh, uh, for example, Picasso, who was the dominant oh, figure? Oh, Picasso the... always did inspire me. I think he's a great artist. How about a man like Rauschenberg? Yeah, Rauschenberg, too. Good one, too? Mm-hmm. You have his book, don't you? Yes, his I do. Yeah. Is there a danger in studying the work of other artists, of becoming, you know, a copier of their work? Is that a danger? I think it is. But not many people, they don't get very well by doing that. No. So. But you take a series like this, Women Bound. Yeah. In a lifetime, something like that maybe comes once, maybe never. Not oh. so easy. In other words, once you get the idea, yeah. Yeah. then I gather that's not difficult because it flows out that's, of you. That's You're right. an artist. But it's to get that germ, that seed, mm -hmm. that's the catch, isn't it? Well, if you're looking, if you're wanting to do something and you have any vague notion at all about what it might be, you, you uh, find things easier. They come to you easier. Are you the only member of your family who is artistically bent, creative? Yes. You are. Uh -huh. There's no one else. No. Where do you think you got it? Uh, I think it was in my family back. Way back. Way back. You do? Mm -hmm. You think there were artists in your family? Yeah. Really? There were artists that I never knew. Yes, of course. Because they didn't play the same kind or work the same way I did. Yes, ma'am. But. Uh, Have you enjoyed this interview or has it been painful? Oh, no, I've enjoyed it. You're a delight to be with. I hope I can say, have said something you might. Like to you. Well, I want to tell you about Clyde Connell. You are something. You don't have to say a whole lot. Your life may be your greatest painting, you know? Oh. I mean, how you spoke out when yeah. whenever the rest of us kind of trembled and hid out. And, and, and for a white woman, back in those days, yeah. I wish I could import to our younger viewers, black and white, what this lady's life has meant. Her life has been a work of art. 
I want to ask you, Claude, how would you like to be remembered? Well, I, I worked so hard for civil rights. I would like to be remembered as a civil rights worker. Not as an not, artist? Not as an artist. I'd put it before art. That? Because I think that's important. You must love your fellow man. Well, I do. And I love what uh, the results of certain things. You know, you get certain results for certain actions and that stuff. I want to thank you for letting us bother you today. Oh. And you're a dear, dear, very talented lady, and, and Louisiana Public Broadcasting is honored. You have honored us by letting us join you today. May I kiss your hand like an old yes, Southern gentleman? Yes, that's right. I'll remember that. Thank you, Clyde. Thank you. Just wonderful. It's wonderful to have you all come out. Thank you, ma'am. Spend your time here. It's you. been a wonderful opportunity for all of us. Yeah. You've inspired us. You certainly have inspired Gus Wilde. <laughs> Nature has fueled Clyde Connell's imagination for much of her 97 years. Spanish moss and buckeye are part of her artistic interpretations. Mystic wooden totems sprout from her Lake Bistineau property. Themes of communication, pathways, and habitats are interwoven in her collages and forms. Like other great artists immersed in a place, Georgia O'Keeffe, Claude Monet, she sculpts with what she sees in nature and in the human condition. Uh, I would go to New York and see mothers just following their daughters around without any thought of themselves doing what their daughters told them to do. And I called them down people because they didn't have a life of their own. I was quite concerned that the women of my age or uh, didn't, didn't express themselves. Hers is a settled life. Born in North Louisiana, farming town of Belcher, Connell has never strayed very far or stayed very long from this place. I feel the need every once in a while to record something or to uh, leave, a, leave some memory of it. She says we should let nature be. Her sculptures face the weather. They stand as sentinels to defy the rain. I don't have anything unfinished. I would love very much to start a new season. You would? Yeah. Do you have anything inside of you in mind? No. Does it, are, will you wait for it? No, it'll come. It will? Yeah. Stay at her home place long enough to accept nature study her work long enough to accept her way, and you may learn to accept too. Louisiana Legends is made possible by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana. This important program series enables us to discover, through the accomplishments of our fellow Louisianians, the unique character of a state so proudly served by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana for 60 years. For a copy of this program, call 1-800-973-7246 or send 1995 to Louisiana Legends care of LPB, 7733 Perkins Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70810. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery.